All right, coaches, uh, welcome to the last, I guess, system orientated one. There's been two of them, or style orientated ones. The offense last week, the D trans tonight, and then obviously fight over the skill stuff with Joe. Tonight's, tonight's going to be fairly different. Uh, there's three coaches here, sorry, four coaches here that have seen this stuff before, and it is fairly different, but it's going to be suiting our style of play, which we spoke about last Friday in terms of the non-stop, no rest, relentless, and then maximizing our skill set, minimizing our size. So historically, D trans, shots going up, there's a whole heap of decisions to make, some get back, some go forwards, who's doing what, we don't know. We're trying to eradicate some of that decision making, but also get everybody being assertive and relentless from the start. So once that shot goes up, there's no mental blanks. Shot goes up, we then tag up. Why? The why behind us wanting to do this? It suits our styles we spoke about. Um, there is less grey area, so it allows for greater accountability. It's not, oh, I thought I was above the foul and so I was getting back, or oh, I thought it was open, so I was crushed. It's like, no, that's the person defending you. You didn't tag up, they got a layup. Again, all this stuff will make sense as we build onto it. Where's the opponents down? Uh, so then they're having to box out every single time and they're literally playing from baseline to baseline and they're under full court pressure the, the entire game. It's not get over halfway, then we'll find them. So again, it wears them down. Generates opportunities. And I stress the emphasis of opportunities for offensive rebounds and steals. They're byproducts of it. We're not, in, we're not tagging up to get offensive rebounds, not tagging up to get steals. They become a byproduct. They're opportunities that present themselves. And then one or two things will happen. We will either secure the offensive rebound as a byproduct of it, or we're mashed up straight away and we're pushing them up the floor, applying early ball pressure. So there are one or two things will happen. How we get there? All right, first is we can't turn it over. Doesn't matter what D-trans system you have, if you turn it over, your D-trans are going to suck. All right, so you can't turn it over. Second thing is your immediate matchup is the player who was defending you. So if I'm, if I'm on this, in this guard spot, and in my prescribed matchup might be the other corner, doesn't matter. Whoever's defending me on the rise of the shot, that's your matchup in transition. By all means, switch back in the half court. We get high side and central and try to scrum them up the floor. So what that means, and again, we'll go through this, the shot goes up, we're high side between uh, them and their basket, and we're central of them. So if they do get it, we're channeling to the sideline. We're not letting them go middle. So again, higher side and central. I'll explain the scrumming stuff a bit later. Now finally, once possession is obtained, we're in our general D-trans positioning. So as we've all done before with the dog, the plug, the design kick heads, etc., that all comes into play after that. A few of the toughest elements with this, and we'll touch on them briefly tonight, but they're going to be things we have to work together on throughout the season. Uh, one's leak outs, so essentially when someone defends the shot and then just runs down the floor, before I've had a chance to land in my shot, they've already gone. The other one's baseline spill. So if we're in transition, I go for a lap and I break through the baseline and my guy's taken off. Again, that's tough. And the third one's zones. But for half of us, that won't matter because 12s and 14s are not allowed to play zones. Unless you know how to break the rules, right, Scotty? Work your way around it. All right, uh, these athletes haven't done it. There's one that's been exposed to it. And that's, that's deliberate. So it's... We've got 14s all the way through to 18s, boys and girls. That's to try to give you guys a feeling of how they can pick up on it and how it may suit your group as well. So we'll work through it with these athletes as we go tonight. So almost all of them are learning at the same pace you guys are. Tonight is about the transition. It's not about the half court. Jared asked them before what we're doing in the half court. We're not touching on that tonight. That's almost going to be a whole other um, clinic. So we're not touching that side. It is about the transition. And then again, it's not about the rotations. It's not about well, if they get beat, who's going where. It's, it's not about, it's just about the transition from once we shoot it to then once we are in the half court. There will be an element tonight where we go up and backs. And there'll be uh, clearly half court defense comes to play. But we're not coaching that. All right. First things first, we'll go through our D trans positioning once everything else is taken care of. So once the other team does get the ball, our floor spots. So we're gonna build that up to start with, so then when we get to our tagging up later, we get a better understanding of our positioning on the floor. 
Uh, boys, can we grab you up this end, please? All right, real simple to start. We're going one v one. So let's get you ladies go have a ball between us, please. We're all going to be on this side of the floor. Let's actually get um, let's get you four starting down that baseline corner and make sure your ears are open. Just make sure you're warmed up. Keep jogging. All right, Charlie, you're going to defend Chantel to start. We're not trying to turn them, especially with juniors. I feel as though the more we try to turn people in the back court the more we open ourselves up to getting beat middle, and then we're in a world of hurt. So your job defensively, yes, to challenge Chantel, but to make sure she stays sideline. Do not let her get middle. If she tries to get middle, cut her off, and again, challenge on the sideline. Chantel, if you can beat her, go for it from the start. So the challenge of this is, I'll play you for a tick, yeah. is if our, if our foot positioning is far too open and giving them a lane, we're beat. So we are trying to force side or challenge sideline, but not in the, with our feet positioning, opening right up and giving the floor to play with. Try to run them into the sideline. And when they get there, Chantel will come across. When they get there, it's not then a square up, open up and give a middle. Just keep them there. Make life as tough as possible for them. Constantly getting that dig hand in, trying to challenge her. That's all we've got for now. So if you guys can get a basketball as well. You guys have basketballs. So once this first group gets to say the white line, next group can go. Challenge them, but keep them sidelined. Offense, if you can beat a middle, go for it. You boys are going at the same time. Just make sure if you do beat someone middle, you don't have a head-on collision. Cool with that? All right, let's go. So you guys get what we're doing? Yep. 1v1, try to keep sideline. Good, don't let him come middle. Keep him sideline, keep him sideline. Don't get beat middle, keep him sideline. Keep him sideline. Next group can go. Don't get, hey, go again. Yeah. Sorry. Don't get beat middle. All right, hold up, hold up guys, hold up. All right, want to add to this. Let's we'll get you girls to join the back of that line. We'll get you next two up. Again, it comes from a bit of habit, but if I'm, def I'll play you for a minute, Pat. If I'm defending Tom and he's coming across, habit for the athletes is to try to get in front, but then we open ourselves up to getting beat middle. If you guys on offense can beat the middle, go for it. Hold them to account on that. As Tom gets across, my job's trying to run him into the sideline. I'm then not opening up and giving the middle again. I'm going to keep him here and make his life tough as hell. Come back here, Tom. If he does try to go middle, he's going to try to be touch distance challenge a bit. If he does try to go middle, jump back and across, and again, just make, his, make the sideline the only option for him. Let's get a couple more reps on this, and we'll build it a bit. Uh, you guys go first. Go, Pat. Don't let him come middle. Keep him sideline. Keep him sideline. Good, Pat. Good job, boys. Good job. Next rep can go. It doesn't matter, sub it with anyone. Keep going, keep going. Ooh, not in Kyra's house. Girls, just hold up. Good job. Boys. We'll get you guys to jog down here. We'll all start at this end now. All right, can we now start? So with you two on O and D, and we get another white offensive player on the baseline here, and the blue defending them. Uh, a major benefit I've found from just keeping sideline is not only does it help us keep the ball in front, but it also means everyone else gets a position, can hold position. When we start letting the ball change sides of the floor, then defense likes to change sides of the floor, and that's when we start breaking down. Particularly when there's so much space in transition. We're now building this to 2v2. So Charlotte, you still have dogs, so our communication, the ball's dog. Communication, defending, uh, 
the highest pass is plug. So your job is literally like a plug in the sink. Don't let anything through. Not going to go through too much on the positioning of that. You just need to be in a position where if Charlotte does get beat middle, you can stop the ball. So if you're too deep, Chantel gets a run up and beats you. If you're too high, she beats you straight away. She's kind of got to find that happy medium. What we do want to do to start with though, is Chantel, I want you to make a pass across to Tom. And on the flight of any pass, we turn and sprint. So make the pass, turn and sprint. So Pat turns and sprints. Remember, you're trying to keep him sideline. So sprint to position, you can keep him sideline. And Charlotte sprints to position where she can stop the ball if Pat does get beat middle. You guys are going to go two passes. So across, back, and then it's live. Sprint, turn and sprint to position. And it is live from the get-go. Uh, you can't pass across halfway though. So after the second pass, can't just have one of you take off and the other one throw a full court pass. You have to dribble across halfway for this. It is live down, wait at that end. Next group will be ready. Charles. Turn and sprint. Good dog and plug. Communicate dog and plug. Keep the sideline. Vision pat. Good job. Right. Just real quick on that. That's my communication. But the person in plug is their position to not allow, not allow blow bys through the middle. If, um, if Charlotte had have got beat sideline then, that's not Pat's responsibility. I know in 2v2 it's harder. If it's sideline, leave it with the initial ball handler or the initial defender. Let's get another blue one here. Looks like blue's on offense. Blue has the ball, that's offense. All right. So, if, so as I was just saying, if Kyra, sorry, if Jazz is getting beat sideline, we don't want you coming across to that. That's Jazz's responsibility. You only need to stop it if she comes middle. So two passes at least to start. You have to dribble across the half. Charles, turn and sprint. Keep the sideline. Turn and sprint. Good, that's fine. Good, Jazz. There we go. Straight away, ball pressure, making life a bit tougher. Hold up. That was a turnover. Uh, you guys wait. There, we'll come back for you. All right, you guys swap it over, bring it back this way. Hold up, uh, really focus the person closing out to the ball, close out to position, you can keep sideline. So if I close out, if the ball's pass across to Charlotte, and I close out toes to toes, she can beat me either way. Close out to a position higher than her, keeping a sideline. Don't let her beat your middle. Four sidelines is the only option. Ball will start with Pat. At least two passes. You must dribble across halfway. Charles, turn and sprint. Dog and plug. Communicate dog and plug. Keep the sideline, Tom. All right, next two up. Good, turn and sprint. Turn and sprint to plug. Keep the sideline, Will. All right, uh, both ball defenders then got caught drop stepping, pivoting and turning. It does become tough with positioning, trying to keep sideline, but that's just something the athletes have to keep practicing to get used to. There's no exact science on their foot position, their angles, but we do not want them opening up and laying middle. We don't want them sprinting, getting ahead and then having to turn either. Try to keep sideline. We're going to build this again. So you guys who didn't get a go that time, let's put you in the corner, O and D, and we'll put you in this corner, O and D as well. So we need, we need a, another defender with Mitch. You won't need the ball, Mitch. Yep. Uh, you guys are still in, so it's now 4v4. We've added those four guys. All right. So, Dog, you're the person defending the ball, the dog's job to keep sideline. The person defending the highest pass, so being Tom, your job's to plug, don't get beat middle. Two we've added. Ball side. Your job, Mitch, is to be up the floor a bit, so chest the sideline. Up the floor a bit to the point where if Charlotte does get beat sideline, you can stop the ball, but you're not allowing the kick ahead. So we can't just allow the ball to be a bullet straight down the line and get to Ryan. So you've got to be up the floor a bit, denying that. Seeing both ball and man. Person weak side, your job's to be low. So if we think half court defense, we have the low, we have the nail. For this, we'll communicate 
plug and low. If the ball changes sides, so again, Pat, you're closing out to keep sidelines, Charlotte closing out to plug, good, Campbell's closing out to deny, kick your head, and be in a position to help Pat if he gets beat. And Mitch, you're sprinting to be low. Right, so we're loaded up to the ball, there should be nothing coming down sideline, nothing down the middle. Pat, your job is to keep sideline. Go two passes to start again, turn and sprint, it is then live. Uh, for this, you can pass across the half. That then becomes on the person defending the ball, making sure there's enough ball pressure so they can't just throw that pass. We cool with that? Let's see how we go on the way down. Let's go, see how we go on the way down. Turn and sprint, turn and sprint. All right. So Charlotte, if you can apply a bit more ball pressure on Chantel, make that a tougher pass. And Mitch, make sure you keep vision of the person you're defending. If he takes off, you got to take off with him. All right, let's swap it over and go head back. Hold up, sorry. Communication is low and deny. If the ball changes size, we turn and sprint to our next position. Let's go. Good. That's right. That's right. We're getting the half. Go play the game. Let's get subs and go again. Turn and sprint. All right, now, um, this is D-Trans Clinic, but we'll speak about communication real quick. I find the more we can provide the athletes the cues of what to say, the less reason they have to not talk. So, Kyle's communicating dog. If you communicate ball, that's absolutely fine as well. Will, you're communicating plug. Letting Kyra know that you've got her back in the middle. Pat, you're communicating low. And Miss, you're communicating deny. We've got to get those four things covered. So if that then changes sides, you're low, Pat's deny, you're communicating ball slash dog, and Kyra's communicating plug. For each of you, there's only two things you have to communicate. Be loud and clear on that. Let's go. Good, turn the sprint, turn the sprint. Keep a sideline. Play, play the game, play the game. That's all right. Again, we're not critiquing the half court defense, more about the full court. Let's go one more, 4v4, and again, we'll build it. Keep us all on, Jazz. All right. Hello there. Again, it's new for the athletes as well, but as soon as we get beat middle, our world becomes a lot harder. Now add the fifth player, just so we get game, as much game context as possible. So we've got the same four to start. We'll add a fifth set starting bottom of the halfway circle. Oh, there's a few things we want. We'll get you bottom of the halfway circle. So once, once uh, the second pass is made and it becomes live there, you guys are live to rim run, run wings, it's up to you. The person defending this deep player, we don't want them getting caught basket side and sealed deep. So let's for argument's sake say that Chantel's offense has come all the way down the floor. We're not getting buried deep and she's laying a full court pass for a turn and score. We'd rather you be ball side of them taking away as much space for the ball handle as possible. The other part of that is that if, so Chantel, let's get you deep. Charlotte, let's get you staying ball side of her. So be in a position you can see your ball and man, and let's get you up the floor a bit. Because I reckon if Kyra's applying enough ball pressure, she won't make that full court pass. Now, if Jazz does try to pass over the top to one of the wings, you could probably go pick it off as well. All right, so let's get you starting here. On the second pass, you can either rim run or run to a corner, it's up to you. Be ball side of your matchup. Your communication's deep. Uh, you're in here, Will, you're low. Deny, ball slice dog, and plug. Two passes, then it's live. Don't get beat middle. Let's go. Turn and sprint, turn and sprint. Deny, kick it, Mitch. Right, hold up, hold up, hold up. So, Mitch, we want to make sure you keep denying that kick ahead. 
So the ball handles under as much pressure as possible, they can't just release it. Right, keep that pressure built on the ball handler by us all being in great position. Swap it over and head back. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, sorry. We're just waiting for the, the bigs down there being ready. Let's go. Talk your spot, talk your spots. Good, play the game now, play the game, play. Yeah, Kyle. Okay, we're not going to coach the offense. We're not going to focus too much on the half court D. It's just that D trans. All right. Uh, so they're the floor spots we're going to get to. So once once the other team does obtain possession of the ball, we want the dog, the plug, denial, low, deep. They're the spots we want to continue to get to. Uh, none of that stuff changes, and that's the general principles of D trans that we've been working with for a few years now. Now we're going to build into the tagging up. Uh, to start with, we are only playing to the half. Uh, we'll work through this. Let's get uh, offense and defense deep wing. So just above the break in the three. Offense and defense in this guard spot. And we'll get a, a shooter, say, on this wing. Everyone else can start subbed out. Just offense here, so you can sub out, mate. Uh, ball can start with Mitch. So how it's going to work, you're going to, go, you're going to pass. Charlotte will make the pass to Will. On Will's catch, and as soon as you rise into the shot, this is where the tagging up comes in. So as soon as he rises in the shot, Charlotte's matchup is Chantel. Your matchup is Ryan. So high side and central. So you're going to get high side of Chantel between her and her basket. So Chantel, uh, Ryan, jump here for me. I'll act as though you were defending me. Shot's going up. I'm going to get high side of you, same between... You and your basket at that end, and trying to be central of you, so that if you do get it, you can't beat me middle. We do that by getting low and getting into their hip and actually trying to push them down the floor, so if you do get it, you've got as much of the court as possible to have to play against me. I'm not letting him catch it all the way out here, and then play half the court. We're trying to scrum them down the floor. So you'll do the same thing with Ryan, you're going to get high side and central and trying to push him down. If he does get it, he has to go sideline. You want to do that Chantel, high side and central, trying to scrum her down. She does get it, she's going sideline. You're playing two on two just to the half. At halfway, you can stop, reset. We're just trying to get this tagging element and the scrumming element in first. So that the ball over here. So pass, pass, shot. On the right of the shot, we tag. Right of the shot, high side and central. Good, play it live, play it live. Now keep it in the sideline. All right, all right. Not too bad, let's get subs in. Let's get subs in. Before we start, let me just add a bit to it. So someone's defending Tom, a shooter over there, and the others can be ready to rotate. So can we, can we rotate on the next one? Uh, oh, Benny. That's a fine. Uh, one of two things will happen. We'll either get the offensive rebound, or in a great position, apply ball pressure early out the floor. So if, on this instance here, what, if you guys can get the O rebound, you go for it. Otherwise, we want ball pressure, keeping it sideline straight away. Do not let your match up get basket side of you. We cool with that? Always stay high side. Schultz, pass, pass, shot on the rise of the shot, tag, on the rise of the shot, tag. Good, play it, play it, play it. Axel's still in, play, play, play. Go out. Good, all right. Not bad. Let's go. Next, next one's up. Play it live. So if offense gets no rebound, go score it. Play it live to the half. We need a blue on offense here. We're going to knock down shoot on the other side. On the rise of the shot, tag up. Scrum them in. Good, play it, play it. Keep a sideline, Mitch. Keep a sideline, Mitch. All right, let's go. Next ones. All right, now. If you do get basket side of your matchup, you have to come up with the ball. All right, so again, Pat, if you're defending me, the shot's gone up and I'm scrumming him in and I get either level with him or basket side, I have to come up with the ball. Because if I don't, they've got a five on four advantage going the other way. So I have to stay high side of Pat between him and the basket. If I can get it, I'll go for it. But my job stay high side and central. So if I'm scrumming him in, I'm scrumming him in, 
and he does get and tries to go this way, that's fine. Just keep him to that sideline. Don't let him turn back as per our one-on-one -on -one at the start. Show us perfect demo, guys. Pass, pass, shot. Rise a shot, tag up, high side and central. Play it, play it, play it. Play it, keep it, it's live, it's live, play it from there. Keep it sideline, Chantel. Let's go, next one's up. We'll go two more and then we'll build it. Two more and we'll build it. On the shot, good. Scrum them down, scrum them down. Play it, play it, it's live. Keep it sideline, Campbell. Keep it sideline, Campbell. All right, now, um, Zave got that pretty central, right? It's probably here-ish. There's no real obvious sideline. What I want you to do is just pick one and keep him there. So if it's this sideline, pick it and keep him there. If it's that sideline, pick it and keep him there. Don't go turning them. Let's go one more. Providing it's good. Uh, before we do this one, I want us to be mindful of the scrum not being two hands in the back and pushing. So you get called for a pushing foul and people start throwing their bodies. It's pretty obvious for the refs. I want to try to get into their hip and try to get low and try to push them down with their hip with your hands out, using your shoulder and your hip to push them. Let's go. On the shot, on the shot. High side and central, good. Play it, play it, play it. It's live. Keep a sideline. Talk plug. Good heart. Not bad. Um, as for other clinics, guys, if there's questions as we go, by all means, put your hand up and ask. Otherwise, I'll keep getting through it and perhaps address some of them at the end. All right, let's now go the exact same starting point, but it's 3v3. So we're adding a defender on this shooter. Uh, the person defending the shooter has to box them out, you know how to run off. Finish your shot, land, then get high side and central, trying to scrum him into the paint down the floor. It is 3v3 still. Uh, let's play it just to the half still though. We've got ball slash dog, plug, and the third person is going to be deny or they're going to be low. Communicate those spots. Charles, let's go. High side and central, high side and central. Good, play it, play it, play it. Keep a sideline. No, I can get Mitch. Yeah, that's alright. That's alright. Let's go. Next one's up. Subs in. When you're ready. Good. Keep a sideline, Chantel. Alright, hold up, hold up on that. So again, think our position we did at the start. Uh, Jazz, you got two wide with Charlotte then, and it's left the middle of four wide open for Kyra. So you remember your job, yes, is to stay below your matchup, but to make sure that we don't we don't get beat middle. So keep that plug spot filled. Next ones. Now, um, particularly with a athletic disadvantage to start with, because we're always going to be like for like athletically. If Pat's far quicker than me, which he's not, but if he was, and he was with high side, tagged up, I've scrummed him down, he wants to get the ball. If I can get him on the back foot early, just with a bit of a shove, it gives us just that split second for me now to get to spots, everyone else to fill their spots. If he gets it straight away, I back off, now he has a metre or two to get that head of steam and start going at me. Oh, jeepers, another fine. We're making money tonight, guys. All right, so straight away, get him on their back foot, Scrum them, try to push them down the floor a little bit more. Give yourself that buffer. Don't just straight away go on the back foot. That gives them a head of steam to attack you. 3v3, let's go. Money. Play it, play it, play it, play it, play it. Keep it this sideline now. Keep it this sideline now. Oh, don't get beat middle, Tom. Keep it this sideline then. Let's go. Couple more. Jam them early, ball pressure early, don't let the ball handling get going straight away. Delay them. Let's go. Good play, keep the sideline Campbell, keep the sideline Campbell. There you go, good. All right, 
One more. One more. One more through and through. High side and central. Good, good. Keep a sideline, Tom. Keep him there. There you go. Good, good. Well done. All right. Let's now go 4v4. So let's have the same three spots. Let's actually, let's get that guy more guard. So two guards, two wings. O and D. Offense and defense. And one of you has to step out because that'll be 5v4. All right. You are now going full court on this. So we'll go pass, reversal, rise shot with high side and central. If your matchup does get it, keep them sideline. Everybody else you need to be in either plug, denial, or deep. All right, to so get to one of those four spots, your positioning in D-trans doesn't change once they have the ball. Same as what we did at the start. Offense, you're live. So if you can go score, you go score. We're just going one way. So we'll stop at that end. Show us, guys. Good high side on your matchup. High side on your matchup. Scrum them in. Play it. Play it. Still in. Play. 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 Keep a side on Pat. <coughs> Good job, Holly. Good. Uh, Kyle, just make sure that as the ball's on that side of the floor, you get across the deep. Don't get caught hugging. Uh, swap it over. So. Right, shot high side and central. <clears throat> Play it. Good Tom, keep him sideline, Tom. Good, there we go. Good, good. Oh, right, hello. Um, just that build up of pressure, and we're not in full gameplay. But by Tom being there and being on the front foot and third, even with Pat, as soon as he gets it, just those little fumbles here and there, they're opportunities we may get a steal. But if we don't get a steal, at least it's delayed him long enough for everyone else to get to position. Because Tom's applied that early ball pressure. Good job. Let's get some subs in. <coughs> Sub in, use your voices, tell people who's been dragged. We get the next lot of four and four. Ooh. Good, there we go. Excellent. Ball with Will. Good. Swish. Into the ball, Charlotte. <coughs> That's right. That's right. Defense, good job. Charlotte again, try to keep it sideline. Let's go swap it over here. So, uh, whites on no? Aren't they? Let's play ball. Good. High side and central. Tag, Sh uh, Chantel, tag. Keep it there, keep it there, match up. Good, now shrink. Play the game, play the game. Let's get a score, go play. Good job, all right, hold it, hold it, hold it. So one more, one more. Let's go, come on. Blues on offense. One, two, three, four, excellent. One more wide on D. Quick, quick, excellent. Let's play. High side and central. Ball pressure, Will. Good. Let's go plug. Oh, hold up, hold up, hold up. Um, First thing on that, and we said at the start of the night, we're not going to get into rotations. You see with that, Will has been beat. That's going to happen. And our half-court rotations just become as per normal then. We're in the half-court. We're not touching on that tonight, but we can work on that during the season. Uh, again, Will, if you can provide that early ball pressure kind of game on the back foot to start, that gives you an advantage. You can then back off a little bit. Let's go one more, four on four, heading back that way. Offense, you get it. Look to attack him as early as you can. High side and central. High side and central. Good play. 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 Give us all on, Dave. 
Play it, play it, play it. Oh, hurry, hurry, hurry. Guys, you've, uh, you've been going for a bit without much of a rest. So grab a quick drink if you have one here. Uh, if you don't, there are some drink fountains around the corner. Are there any questions from coaches at this point? We've thrown a fair bit at you so far. Um, do you have any questions or comments or even concerns about what, how this might look with our age group? Yeah. Um, yeah, I get what you're coming from. I think 12s and 14s, not so much because no shot clock, but for older age groups, implement a shot clock with that stuff. So the rise of shot, you can start a shot clock. The lower you get them in that clock before they cross halfway, the better. And then it might be a case of, hey, if you can get them down a six or seven seconds cross halfway, you get a bonus point. For under 12s and 14s, by all means, still use that. Because again, it's about long-term development. So the shot clock doesn't come into play for them. But if they have an understanding of how that clock pressure and the build-up of that pressure helps over time, by the time they do get to 16s from the shot clock, they're in a far better place. Uh, it can be uh, like you spoke about just then, Hack, if, it's a, if you're allowed to kick ahead, you're back to zero. If like, your team's really struggling with allowing kick heads, score reset, bad luck. Um, on the flip side, if you throw a kick head, you might get a bonus point. Any others at this point? No, nah, alright. Oakley Doakley team, let's get... Uh, I'll skip ahead a little bit on this because you guys are actually doing a fairly good job picking this up. Same four perimeter spots. Let's now get a fifth set of O&D on the block. Doesn't have to be bigs, it can be anybody. Let's get a fifth set of O&D on the block. We're going to start the ball in the block. There you go. All right. Chantel, you're allowed to pass to your favourite person on the perimeter. Other three don't be offended. Uh, when you do pass, it's a catch and shot straight away. And then we're tagging up. High side and central. Same thing for the post play now. Shot goes up. We, want you, we don't want you turning and trying to get underneath Kyra. Because if she gets it, then they're out. You've got to make sure you're high side and central. So if she does get it, she's deep. And you can force a sideline. We've now got all of our spots filled. Ball slash dog. Plug. So the high help. We've got low. Person kind of in the middle of the floor. Deny and deep. Communicate those four, sorry, communicate those five spots when we're going to be in a good place. Don't get beat sideline. Do everything you can to allow the kick ahead. Everybody be in positions to help. So plug, be in a position. If they do get beat middle, you can slow the penetration. Denial, be in a position where if they do get beat, you're kind of there putting doubt in their mind so they don't just go 100 mile an hour down the sideline. We're going one end at a time, see if there's anything we need to change, and then we'll bring it back. So you'll kick out Chantel, and then we're live. High side and central. Good play, keep it there. On the front foot. Good. Not bad. So Chantel and Matt, when Kyra does get it, if you can be there with a physical presence without extending and pushing, it's kind of get to take a bit of a step back, or even just get to think for a second, gives everyone else a chance to get to position. All right, swap it over here. Oh, so hard to pick your favourite, isn't it? Oh. High side and central, high side and central. Play it, play it, play it. Good, good, good. Play the game. Fucking good job. All right, now, for tonight, there's no bad shot. So offensive, if you get down, you think you're open, shoot it. Because otherwise we're going to have too long of offence and we're here for defence. Right, so you open, jack it. It's the one time I'll say that. Let's go, swap it over. 
Four stars from the block. I wonder who Tom's favourite's going to be. Let's go. Oh, sorry, hold up. We've got mashups there. Now, again, remember, if your player does get it, don't just back off straight away and be passive. Be on the front foot, try to get them down the court as far as possible, and make them have to uh, cover as much distance as possible. Bias time. Let's go. High side and central. High side and central. Good, good. Play it, play it, play it, play it. Treat that as live. Talk spots, guys. Talk spots. We need a shot. We need a shot. We need a shot. Good job. Defense wouldn't clamp on. Offense can't find an open look. Let's go. Stop it over. Offense, my challenge to you. My challenge to you, offense, so that we can continue to try to teach this defense. If you get it, everything you've got, trying to beat them down the floor. Right, everything you've got, trying to beat them down the floor. Let's go. High side and central. Good, play from there, play from there. Keep on that sideline, keep on that sideline. Keep playing. Ref didn't see it, keep going. Good, plug, plug. Good, there we go, good. We need a bucket, we need a bucket. Who's bringing it? Oh, hold there, defense, you win. That was a 35 second shot clock just expired. All right. We're now going to play this three ends, which means it's going to be live. So we're going to play half out of the exact same start. We're going to go full and full. What's going to occur at that end is it's not prescribed. It's not, you don't know where the shot's coming from. But as soon as that shot rises, whoever's defending you is your matchup. High side and central and try to scrum them into the paint and as far down the court as possible. Offense, you get it. Go as hard as you can down the floor, make defense defend you. From the same starting point here. When you ready, yep. Good, there we go, play it, play it. Oh, hold up, hold up. That's a great example why. Oh, we've, we had everybody inside the key, which then creates, let's get you guys stepping in. Ryan's stepping into it in a bit deeper. In a bit deeper where is where on Ryan's rebounds come in, come in. Might not be exact, but what this creates, all right, especially long shots, creates that umbrella. Anything over the top becomes an offensive rebound for us, right? That's what you got. It was over the top, you're an offensive rebound. If we're all passive and backing off and getting back to cover basket, Mish then gets that and they're off in transition undefended, right? So we create that umbrella, good job. Then, the next one we had the early ball pressure ends up in a turnover. So yeah, we're not trying, the um, O rebounds and steals aren't what we're trying to achieve, they're byproducts of this. We've got both those byproducts in one, well, one possession then. All right, really good job. Same set, starting again from here. So where was the offense just then, white? Yep, same thing. High side and central. Play it, play it, ignore it, play it, play it. Three ends, remember, keep playing. Need a shot, we're playing, we're playing. On your matchups. Good take, all right. So at that end. I feel as though we lost sight of who was defending us. We had two people go to the ball and we got lost in transition. So whoever is defending you, doesn't matter who you were defending to start with, whoever's defending you is your matchup, high side and central on them. So that can be me on the five man and maybe the five man on the point guard, doesn't matter. You've got to get high side and central and scrum them into the paint. Uh, blue ball starting here. Balls in the post. Yeah, big fella. You're in trouble there, Zave. Let's play it. Pick one, shoot it. High side and central. Good, keep it there, keep it there. 
Good, that's all right. Play the game. Look for a shot early. We need a shot. We need a shot. High side and central. High side. Play it. Play it. Oh, hold on, hold on. Freeze, freeze. Freeze. Right now we've got maybe one person that's actually tagged up. Here. Well, you need to be into your matchup and force them up the court. Who was defending? Who are you defending? Sorry, who was defending you? Campbell. So you need to be high side of Campbell around this side and try and right over high side instead of trying to scrum him down. You need to be going to Kyra and trying to scrum her down the floor. Just then, if Blue had have got the ball live, they were off in transition uncontested because you guys haven't tagged up. All right, let's make it. Let's go back to uh, the post up here. Blue's got it, they've got it. Um, we are going three ends starting this end. So we're half, full, full, we'll finish back down here, unless I stop you again. I, Hold up, yep. I cut through that, I didn't have anyone on me, but you go fly on a player or anything. We're going to get to that bit soon. Rain man. Good, good. Play it. Remember, it's three ends. Good pat. Get a shot, we need a shot. Tag, high side, high side. Good white, much better. Keep it there, Pat. Got a hole out, that counts, that three ends. Subbing up here, Will. Much better job, white. And again, white, because you all got a match up on that and tagged, we end up getting a steal and a layup. That end, if I didn't stop that, you're giving up a layup. Possession game. Start again, you said the three ends. High side and central. Ah, uh, keep the side on, Tom. So, so, let's go, make subs, next round. Now, uh, the thing, is so what occurred on this wing, guys, just listening, because this, this will help you guys, well, what occurred on this wing is Tom, you came across and had a bit of a gamble at the ball, and got beat. Oh, we want to be assertive, but we're not making, we're not having, uh, we're not taking risks, we're not gambling on this. So when you have that, when you have your match up here, keep him sideline. As soon as we square up and land middle, we're done. Uh, don't take risks, just build the pressure through great defense. Let's go to the next set of three. High side and central. We'll be high side car, high side car. We'll keep him sideline. Good Charlotte, there you go. Good job. Play it, need a bucket, need a bucket. No bad shot here. Good, high side and central. With your matchup, Mitch. All right, not bad. Uh, once they do get going, we've got to fill four spots. So yes, I'm high side and central on Will, but if he takes off, I'm taking off with him. And if, don't have to go, but if Will was real deep and the ball was here, I'm not staying up the floor. I'm getting back into a floor spot that's going to help. Probably low, right? Or deep. Let's go reset here. One more and then we'll uh, add something different to it. Good, good. Play it, play it. Play, 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 play! Good job, right, hold it. Um, for tonight, we're playing, we're not playing out of bounds just so they can get it and go. There's definitely an element at your team practices of that. But 
when the ball goes out of bounds like that, it works in our favour. We've, because we've tagged up high so we've pushed them up the floor, they haven't got a rebound, they haven't triggered the break. So straight away we can get set up, everyone's on the same page defensively, it actually works out well for us. So I encourage you in your practice to have a mixture of, it's live no matter what, and yeah, if it's out of bounds, it's out of bounds. Because that just allows us to get set back up. All right, how are you guys feeling about that? Good answers. All right. Next part. Let's um, get set up in the same floor spots. Same floor spots. So wings, guards, post, five and five. Means one of you gets to sit out for now. Let's just change this slightly though. Let's push um, Jazz, get you to the wing, uh, sorry, to the corner. Tom to the wing. And let's just get you height right at point and right up to the wing. We spoke at the start about three of the toughest challenges of this, one being leak outs. So leak outs is when the person defending the shot just takes off. How we defend that is the highest guy on the floor is responsible for that person. Leak outs happen, we've found the most through our men's season last year is from the corner. Because it's a really hard spot to tag up from. Particularly because the closeout is generally coming on the higher side, it makes it even harder to tag up. When the ball's with Jazz, don't shoot it, but let's say you've shot it, and Charlotte's contested that, and the Charlotte starts leaking out. Right? Which, so you're cherry picking. Mitch, you're the highest guy on the floor, right? Nobody gets basket side of you. So if Charlotte decides to cherry pick, you've got to keep coming back. On the rise of your shot, Jazz, keep it, pretend you've shot it. You need to sweep the elbow. So what that means is that you're, you're coming sprinting straight to the elbow, because that's a great offensive rebound position, and from there you can find matchups. Mitch, you gotta use your big boy voice and communicate to everybody else what's going on. All right, so let's say you've come down a bit more. Let's for argument's sake say that Will, the uncontested player now, did get the ball. Ball here, please. You swept the elbow, so you're still behind the play. Hold up. Right now, we just need to get back and cover the basket. Like he's uncontested. We can't expect Jazz to come from behind. If you do go to that, leave Charlotte wide open for a layup. It becomes really tough, right? It's so your job is to make sure nobody gets basket side. And everyone else, we're trying to get to our matchups. But by crikey, the ball matters second most important to the person who's leaking out. We can't leave that uncontested. We can't leave this uncontested either. Easy way to fix it, communication. If you talk and listen, it'll fix most of the problems. So for here, we do want a corner three. The contest, we are leaking out. Make sure the highest person on the floor has got safety. And we then communicate to try to get ball pick up. Dog, feel deep. And we can't be hanging behind the ball, can we? We've got to turn and sprint to get ahead of it. We're going one way, one way for this. So from the corner, we'll start the ball in the corner. We'll get a triple up. So go, yeah, uh, let's get you, let's get you passing the ball. So it's just a little bit more game-like. Ball here. Make the pass, contest, and once you contest, you're out of here. Play it. Yep, yep, shoot it, shoot it. Sorry. My fault. It's live. Shoot it, and go, you're out of here. Play it, play it, play it. Good, hold it, hold it, just one in. Uh, Jazz, great job coming through the elbow. I feel as though you could have stopped at will and it's delayed him. All right, so try to get matchups still, not just sprint back. Try to get matchups. And if we're at a disadvantage, turn and sprint. I know where a lot of the gray area comes or can come in. A few more decisions come into play. Keep thinking. Nobody gets basket side and we try to stop the ball as soon as possible. Let's get another corner three. Could be somebody else. Post and wing, point wing corner. Start with the ball here, Ryan, edge of key. Right in the corner, Campbell. So rise of the shot, you're leaking out. Charlotte, you have safety on that. You gotta sweep the elbow and you gotta try to find the matchup from there. It's best if you communicate to uh, Campbell who his matchup might be. All right, let's play. Good. Play it, play it, play it, play it. There we go, good. Play the game, play, play from there, play from there. Right. 
half court excluded, not too bad. The communication between what Charlotte was saying and Campbell listening, you guys did a good job, you had matchups on that. Let's have another crack at this. When you're ready, contest, leak out, leak out, go Will. Oh, hold up, hold up, all right. Now I did say before you can play it two ways. Let's now start playing out of bounds in Clue because I don't want Joe's over there distressing about his team falling to pieces. Let's start again. If it's out of bounds, play whoever's ball it's meant to be. So if it does become, in this instance, Blue's ball, we inbound and we're playing. Let's play. Close out, leak out, leak out, leak out, go. Yeah, hold it there. Swap it over. Hey, the other players to remember you're trying to tag up and you're squ well, you are tagging up and you're scrumming your player down. Alright, so get into their, into their hip with your hips and shoulders and try to push them down the floor. Let's go. Leak out, go Jazz, go Jazz. Nice. Oh, hold there, hold there. Uh, we want the corner defender to go straight away. Because that instance was, did anybody actually take off save? No, so you can just still go to your matchup. Right, let's get another demonstration of this. Let's go one or two more, and then we'll change it a bit again. So let's get you starting inside the key. A pass, catch and shot, you're contesting, you're out of there. Let's go. Defend, and you're out of there. Ooh. That's alright, good, hold there, hold there, just one end, not bad, last one, last one. Come on, you lot, there we go, let's play, leak out, communicate to him Will, talk to him Will, out of bounds, blue ball. Oh, uh, Blue was on offense here then, right? Start again then, with a the corner three. Let's go. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. So in this instance, we've made the shot. D-trans doesn't matter if we make the shot. Oh. We've now got ourselves an extra couple of seconds. You stay with your, uh, you stay with your match up now. So you shot it. So you've got time then to get back to your man. You communicate that will, you get back to your player. That's five and five. Let's go another one. See if we can make it again, Pat, to get that same example. Nah, you gotta tag up. Hold up. If it goes in, tag it out of bounds and play, yep. Oh, hello. Um, we're not going to keep going with that because it's one of those things where the what ifs, maybes, buts start to come in. But the objective is obviously if we can be five on five and rise a shot, great. If someone takes off, we have to take off with them and the other four can match up. Don't let the ball get ahead of us. The other area of the leak outs occur a lot, which we're not going to go through tonight, is a catch and shoot from the top of the three. This spot's a lot harder, also hard to defend. Way we found most successful with that is the next highest guy's got to go with them. So if I was defending, if I was closing out to this high guy and I took off, well, one of those wings has to sprint and chase me. All right, last one, which will mean we are going to finish early, but that's good for everybody, right? Let's get O and D on this wing, point, wing, corner, and low post. Yep, so we need someone defending Zave. So blue's on O, white's on D. Uh, ball's going to start with Pat though. 
And Tom, you are starting behind Pat. Oh. So the baseline spills if we give up a blow by. And uh, we haven't rotated. So Pat, you're coming through for like Tom, you are chasing it. But Pat's staying in front. So you get a layup and you've then got to break the baseline on your layup. Same so you go on a break next speed, right? You've had to keep going through. There's no way possible for you to be high side of your man now, is there? So how we defend this? Again, highest, highest guy on the floor, make sure nobody gets basket side, which in this case is you, Zave. Make sure nobody gets past you. And we communicate our matchups. After basket, what's the next most important thing? Good ball. And don't get two people to the ball. As soon as you do that, we're already disadvantaged because Pat's out of the play. Try to match up as quick as we can. Do not get two people to the ball. If, um, say if you do a great job communicating and the other four teammates do a great job listening, I can guarantee that we'll find matchups. When you're ready. Good, inbound and go. Ah, whoa! Hold on, was that a miss? <laughs> you right there, Dad? Was that a, was, was that a make? Yeah. I didn't start again, that. start again. I was starting to think he missed a wide open layup. If he does miss it, by all means go. But if he makes it, we're in behind on the ball. Let's go. In behind on the ball. Been all right, all right, all right. So in that instance, right, it's taking you that long to get the ball out of court, we're matched up anyway. Let's now try to get that ball inbound super quick before Pat has a chance to get back in the play. Make or miss, we're inbound in the ball. Let's go. Inbound it quick, inbound it quick. Ah, oh, let's try again. Pat, let's this time say you have to touch the baseline wall. Perhaps you've fallen over, Tom fouled you, you're on the floor, so you can't get back in the play. But touch the baseline wall and see if we're going to have to force matchups from there. Let's go. Get it, Tom, get it, Tom. Good, good, not bad. Bucket. Oh, hurry, hurry. Let's get another one set up here. So same things, let's get offense and defense on this wing. Defense starting behind them. Offense point wing corner. So O and D point, O and D on the wing, O and D in the corner. Plus our monsters in the post. Baseline spill, you have to touch the wall. We're playing live. Go. Ball pressure, Mitch. All right, let's get one more, see if we can get one where we get the ball inbounds real quick and force different matchups. Let's go. Quick, we need O and D on this wing, guys. Thank you, ladies. O and D on the post. Thank you, ladies. Seems to be a common theme here. Corner, boys. Maybe touching the wall, hold up, Kyle, try to get it inbound as quick as you can. Everyone else should be matched up. Apart from Ryan, you just make sure nobody gets basket side of you. Show us. Hold up, hold up, hold up. So the baseline spill is going to occur because we're at breakneck speed. Dan, if you get blown by on that sort of speed, Kyle, we've got some issues. At speed. Let's go, at speed. So you spill the baseline, your momentum's going through, good, back in play. Step to the ball, Mitch. Good. Oh, hold there, hold there. Um, we're not going to keep going through that because again it becomes a, an ear for butts and you can have a million questions, a million different scenarios. Uh, guys, I think we're done with that so we can have a chat to the coaches, but can we thank the athletes first and foremost? Um, it's, it's not easy coming being a clinic athlete, particularly when you haven't been exposed to stuff we're doing and in addition to that is defence. Uh, so I think you guys did a really good job and hopefully that helped the coaches here start to build an understanding of tagging up. Um, you guys, questions, comments, thoughts, concerns about how it may suit, fit? Just with, Got the, um, with that leak out, did your experience when you were working with it last year 
ever have so that the higher players can just hedge, allow that player to recover to pick his original matchup up. That's or fine. That create too many headaches and just get into a rotation. I think the more decisive you are, the better it's going to be. So it comes back to the offensive stuff we spoke about on Friday. If you're decisive, you can't be wrong. At least there's clearly a bit more room to be wrong. Um, but if they're decisive and go to a player, well, everyone else knows that someone else has to be covered. If I start hedging, coming back, and now this guy coming back, well, the other four are doing the same thing in, in response. Haki, how do you, do you see that work with the under-12s to an extent? Yeah. That's going to be a long closeout, and that player's way out of position. And, it, and like we did on, uh, was it Friday? They'll be turning and sprinting without seeing the shot go up, and then they won't be able to know where they're going. Like, yeah, so. Um, I think that's going to be the, probably the biggest challenge you're going to have. Yeah, so I think with that, again, it removes some of that grey area around. You guys can sit, stretch, grab water, call mum and dad if they're going to be a bit later, that's fine. Um, <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. They don't match up that well, but I think there'll be someone that they can see that's close to them, and it won't be them guarding them. But, but it's ta again, takes that grey area out about them all being off. Yeah. As we know, at 12s and 14s, even to an extent some of the 16s, all about just transition. Yeah. So if we can kind of match up and stop them early, it's going to help us. Uh, the other point on hacky stuff then about getting beaten the full court, again, referring to long-term development, uh, those who can stay in front of their man or their woman, their matchup in the full court, they're far more likely to continue to succeed. So if we can start instilling that, uh, the value of that defense from the younger stage groups, the more likely our players are to succeed. Then those who are struggling with it, they have to keep working at it if they want to keep getting better. But defensively, it's not about getting the right matchup, it's just about getting yeah. the right control, right? Closest player, stopping the ball, not letting them just get it and go free reign, and beat us down the floor. Um, it does become a challenge if your five does have to tag up on a point guard if they've been switching or whatever. But that's where you just gotta, gotta try to get them on their back foot a little bit. Keep it in front, give everyone else time to get back to positions and end up, ends up working itself out in the half court. I think it's gonna be a little bit of a battle because the kids are so used to yep. not wanting to get burnt and they sag off. And um, yeah, the battle, that's an interesting one. Like it's, it is one of those things because it is a lot different where we have to be all in on it. Um, so the start of the men's program last year, there was some resistance because like, oh, but if I do this and he gets past me, like, we just had to keep sticking with it um, and keep disciplining them and then really reward or really make an emphasis when someone's done the right thing. Because if I go and tag up my guy, scrubbing me and getting nice and deep, get on the back foot, then back off, really the only way I should get beat is if everyone else is in poor position because they should look up and see the floor just fills. It just kind of becomes on them. Uh, there's nothing wrong. I think it only happened one game last year, but there's nothing wrong with if a team is just smashing it in transition or we're doing a poor job tagging up. So, hey, we're just back. Right off shot, we're back. Because there's nothing worse than the athletes losing um, faith in it because they're doing it not quite the right way and we just keep leaking layups. We did do that at least one, maybe two games, because we had to. But I find it easier to bring them back if they're, they're destroying us than trying to push them forward if we need to be more assertive. So let's be assertive first. We can re uh, retreat to being passive if we absolutely have to. Um, Benny, you've done this stuff with the men's program and then implemented it with the state team. What did you find with some of the, the challenges in teaching it? Yep. Special experienced players, they, they want to do it, they know the advantages of it, and they really want to do it. But in the heat of the game, they just forget it. And, but that's the same with any D-Trans system, if one person doesn't feel like me, it doesn't work. So it's not like it's just this one. If you don't have safety, you know, the whole D-Trans system doesn't work. Um, so Ben is assistant coach of the 16 state team, brought that to the head coach. 
he agreed to go with it. They were, the question was put to them late in the process about whether it was the right thing to keep doing. And they stuck with it and that team ended up winning silver at nationals. Now, I'm not saying it's because they were tagging up, but again, it comes back to the stick with it and be fully committed. And if you have to, you can retreat them. Yep. Um, I'll obviously be around at practices and this is where as the communication recently has been about yeah we don't have perfect alignment with teams that are training together but even if it's just 15 minutes and it doesn't have to be 5 on 5 continuous if it's boys mixed with girls or top age 14s mixed with double bottom age 12s but it just gets them in that habit even if it's just the gets the two on two or three on three with your teams so it might be the 12 bo double bottom age 12s doing it and then the 14s be waiting to sub in it just gives us that full court practice because i know in the it is challenging because we only have half courts but that's what we've got to work together to make sure we get that full court element in it may mean your team sits out every second possession but we're going to be better because of it hopefully they're not getting beat in transition as much as Historically, junior teams do. Not just us, but junior teams do, do. All right, uh, so I said, I'll, I'll be around to help out with that stuff. Um, I'll share some, clearly share this. I'll uh, share, there's a report that Mel Downer, who was an assistant coach of Australian 17 team, wrote after a, I think it was a, an Asia Cup, about the success of tagging up. And there's also another clinic the Aaron Fern, who at the time was head coach of the Cairns Taipan. So I'll also share that so you can see somebody else present it. Um, he says things are slightly different. Something else in that may click. So I'll share those with you as well so you've got as much information as possible. Again, thank you. We wrapped it up early so you can get home. Um, we've got one more, Friday being Joe. So hopefully, again, it can be open mind and see how the stuff Joe does on Friday then transfers back into the offensive style we spoke about last Friday, the defensive style we spoke about today, and how the footwork fits in as well. All right, thanks guys.